So, Dr. Shreya, you can quickly. Uh, a different topic since when we are discussing since morning. I'm just going to talk on blepharophimosis syndrome. You said I'm a, uh, for allowing me to speak the last. Thank you, ma'am, for adjusting my time. I'm just going to speak on blepharophimosis syndrome. We all know which is a syndrome, which consists of uh, blepharophimosis, that is shortening of horizontal palpebral fissure shortening of vertebral palpebral fissure, uh, epicanthus inversus, and the telecanthus, the distance between two canthi, and sometimes associated with ectropion, or can be associated with tear duct uh, abnormalities also, and sometimes patient come with uh, adulthood age with uh, lots of ectropion. Uh, this is, uh, there can be some gonad gonadal atrophy also, and mental retardation along with that. And it's purely genetical. So more than 85% of cases, there will be a mutation of uh, gene FOXL2 at 3Q23 arm. And uh, that is, it is a mostly autosomal dominant and it penetrates 50-50%. Uh, till date, there is only one recessive mutation has been noted for FOXL2 in India, uh, which is very, very rare. And it has got two types. One is all the features I said, and the second feature along with the uh, gonadal deficiency. So prevalence still, I have searched so many literature, it is not known. In our hospital, Drashti Netralai, we found 29 patients of blepharophimosis syndrome. So again, it has uh, uh, said one in 50,000. So that is matching 0.006% we found. Out of that, 23 were presented as a children and nine, uh, six as an adult. 25 were male and 4 were female. Um, aims the, for the treatment here is prevent amblyopia, prevent neck muscle hypertrophy, field of vision, uh, especially medial, and then cosmetic, and finally comes the symp symptomatic, whatever is left for. And the treatment is purely surgical. So preoperative evaluation is must. We have to measure the interpupillary distance, intercanthal distance, horizontal papillary fissure, vertical papillary fissure, medial limbus to medial canthus, and lateral lim limbus to lateral canthus. We have three steps to do. There's one is uh, medial canthoplasty. We have available techniques are these three, lateral canthotomy and dosis correction. But to correct this, we must know the equation. So uh, usually intercanthal distance is equal to half of interpupillary distance. So when we correct, correction needed in each eye is one half of pre-op of ICD by one half of IPD. So for instance, in this patient, if IPD is 58 millimeter, ICD is 37.5 millimeter, we need to correct 4.25 millimeter in each eye. To get this correction, the ratio uh, for the tissue excision is to be two is to three. So we need to excise in this particular patient 6.37 millimeter in each eye and moreover we can just uh, lengthen the horizontal papillary fissure along with that with the lateral canthotomy uh, uh, available. So this is simple CU blast uh, U uh, technique and that is a horn blast technique uh, for the medial canthal epicanthus inversus and this is a YV plasty. So in this patient usually when we open we have to found find out proper medial canthal tendon and then in this patient, I did YV plasty for skin and tissue and then medial canthal res resection also because we wanted more correction in this patient. So we found out the medial canthal tendon properly and then we uh, cut it with non-absorbable suture and then uh, we just uh, excise the excess tissue and then suture in a V pattern. So that is the way we can do epicanthus inversus correction uh, in a medial canthoplasty. There can be a Z plasty or double Z plasty. So you just press place the incision in this way and then suture. So previously we put the incision in this way and then when we suture it corrects. Uh, lateral canthotomy, simply canthotomy works well. Uh, we It can be done with fornicial correction or without fornicial correction. This is a with fornicial correction. Bra suspension, everybody knows. We have so many available techniques. Uh, each has got its own advantage and disadvantage. This is simple silicone transplant, silicone sling done in this patient. We can have our own technique. We are fixing the tussle plate to silicone also. So medial canthoplasty followed by ptosis correction. Or in our rural area, especially patient comes for the ptosis correction first and then later on she came when became adult, came for the medial canthoplasty. So we have to take care of whatever patient wants. And then in this patient, they do, they don't, he didn't want anything except correction of the lateral ectropion. So that we did. 
complication definitely can be an infection of the implant, can be a, a complication related to leg of thalamus, unequal correction, scar is the most dreaded complication patients are taking care. So you need to counsel the patient before patient taking the patient in. So my take home message is amblyopia correction is at most important aim in this patient. Cosmetic, you have to balance between these two. See what patient and relative wants, meticulous planning and pre-operative counseling for the scar is at most important. I wish you all have happy patients uh, to you. Thanks to my patients, thanks to my teachers and thank you. Thank you Shreya for uh, complying the, com uh, the uh, time. You have saved one or two minutes also. Thank you. So uh, <laughs> still the crowd is there. I just noted one point uh, in ROP. I mean, don't restrict yourself to check only the integrity of the retina. You just have uh, an eye to look for the visual milestones development. So any deviation that occurs is just immediately or don't wait for the preemies or the sick babies to wait to develop the normalcy. So just have a, uh, a check out on that and then refer uh, or treat, start treating accordingly. That's what uh, one thing that I wanted to convey to the audience here. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, all the speakers and the audience for patience here.